welcome back. Um, I'm entertaining my friends here, Gary Hart and Tatiana, with stories about L. Ron Hubbard as I knew and experienced them. Um, this is in 1969, and I was on the ship. It was then called the Apollo. Originally, it was the Royal Scotman. Then they painted it white, and it became the Apollo. <laughs> I'm not sure why. I wasn't there in between. I was busy doing other things for the sea organization. So, uh, this second story I'd like to tell is when we had this horrendous storm. It was so bad. I was so seasick. I was going to my cabin to give it up in the sink and then running and I was the bosun's mate. I was tying down the furniture because the chairs, it's a corgi dog. Vixie was corgi. Corgi, yeah. corgi, the kings and queens dog in Europe, right? A corgi, a little corgi. Vixie's running around sliding from one side <laughs> of the ship to the other. The couches are moving. I'm tying down everything so it can't move. Mary Sue is sitting on a couch. The whole ship's going like that. It is bad. What happened was, we were on watch. Tony Dunleavy was the con of the watch, the head of the watch. And I was up on the bridge, and he said, Get the Commodore! Get the Commodore! Because these giant waves are breaking over the ship. And we're stuck going around in a big circle. And when you come next to the side of the waves like this, and they're going over you. You're going to be in big trouble. And we're going, the ship's going around in a circle. It was stuck. He had taken the ship from, what was that called? Automatic into manual. So it got stuck in the middle between automatic and manual. And he couldn't get control of the ship. He couldn't turn it with the big wheel. And he couldn't, whatever, however you do it automatically, I have no idea. At any rate, he yells at me, Tony Dunleavy, this wonderful, soft-spoken, handsome, delicious man, says to me, get the Commodore, get the Commodore, we're stuck. And I'm from Hawaii, and I know about giant waves, <laughs> big waves breaking over you. So I run down to Ron's office. Now, mind you, the man that he had been yelling at, pounding, bellering, ran down to me that other time, the first experience, three days on ship. And he came down to where my desk was, in the very bottom of the ship. Don't you ever call Ron, you know. Ron, you have to say, Commodore, sir, salute, blah, 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 like this, you know. Don't you ever talk to the Commodore like that again. He yelled and screamed at me. He took out his, whatever he got, his own problems, on me. Poor little girl. So, I go to Ron's office. This is like two weeks later. Down the stairs from the bridge. And here's Ron's study. He's sitting behind his big desk. And I'm like, oh my God, what the guy just tell me to tell him? I have no idea. <laughs> Plus, I'm seasick, and you're not supposed to get seasick on the ship. You'd be in a liability condition. So I can't tell anyone zoop, that I'm sick. I have to just be somehow. And I open Ron's doors, and he's looking at me. I say, Ron, I have no idea what's going on, but they need your help on the bridge. And he said, what did he say to say? I, I don't know. Something stuck somewhere. Who knows? <laughs> and here's Ron. He gets up from his chair. He says, well, we'll have to see about that. He puts on a yellow raincoat mm -hmm. and a rain mm -hmm. hat thing. And he comes around this giant desk. And he comes up to me and puts his arm, his right arm, around my shoulders. And he's a big guy. I was much smaller than I am now. I was tiny. And he puts his arm around me and he walks me all the way up to the bridge. He's like, Gary, are your eyes closing? <laughs> this is the most exciting part. <laughs> Stay awake. <laughs> so 
Hubbard walks me and he's talking to me and calming me. Because I don't know what's going on. He's like, it's all right, and walking up to the bridge. And he puts me on this machine. It's a fathometer. I remember him saying that. He says, watch that little green light. And if it hits there, tell me. Because then we're going to hit ground, you know. This is really danger. So I'm watching this light. I focus all my attention the way he described it to me. And he starts bellowing on the bridge. <laughs> Bow, boom. <laughs> my attention was on the machine. Thank goodness. He did that on purpose. It went right through me. It was incredible red energy. It was red, not golden. And he bellers down this, um, it's a voice thing. It's a, like a pipe going all the way down to the engine room. <laughs> he puts his mouth there and he bends over. And he's like, blah, 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 boom, right down there. And they change this and that. Suddenly it's not stuck anymore. These waves were giant. They were crashing over this huge ship. Across the bow. Mm. We could have gone over upside down. That would not have been all right. <laughs> it was a huge storm. Thank you, Gary, for waking up. So, <laughs> <laughs> and after the storm, everything calmed down. We. This is a third story. Do we have enough time for this one? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. So, Everything is calm. I think this could be a different time. Because that storm lasted a while. Okay, this is another watch. Who knows, maybe a few more days later. I'm a little out of present time at the time because by then I'm having this wonderful uh, secret relationship with a very good friend of mine now, Alan Walter. So, I uh, all I remember is it's kind of early in the morning. We've been on watch at night. It's about five, maybe four. It's still pitch black out. There's no moon in the sky, no clouds. And suddenly, the con of the watch, Tony Dunleavy, what's the lady's name? Ema? No, no, the, this, oh, I don't remember her name what? right now. It'll come to me. But uh, she was doing the maps and stuff. They had been in a map room right off the bridge. And here comes Tony. Here comes this lady, like, cowering, like, <gasps> she's going to die, you know? This poor lady. Ugh, older, way older than I was. And then comes Ron. And I'm standing there. I'm trying to be invisible against the door. I couldn't get back inside the bridge fast enough. I couldn't move the door. They come out like that. I didn't know they're coming out. I'm like this. Uh oh. Hubbard comes right in front of me this far. And he goes face to face with me. He's taller than I am. And he says, Candy. Boom. Like that. And I went, Yes, sir. Only time I ever said, Sir, to Hubbard. <laughs> yep, I did. And he says, What is that up there? And I look up. And I made a joke. I said, it's Uranus, sir. <laughs> That's from a joke I'd heard when I was about 18. Because it's a planet. He asked me, what star is that? That's what he said. And I said, it's Uranus. And he says, no, no, it's Andromeda. And I'm like, oh, okay. And Hubbard tells me about 15 minutes of the Galactic Federation and the... And these poor people that have just walked in front of me looking like, oh my God, we're death warmed over. Something really bad has happened or going to happen. Who knows what was going on with them. But um, Hubbard's all about talking to this person, me, and bringing me into present time, which I did like that. The minute he says hi, boom, you're there, you know. And... He's telling me about this sector of the universe and galaxies and so many years ago and blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, oh, okay, yes. <laughs> because Hubbard had put us all that were on OT3. We'd finished OT3. He put us all back on OT3. And I won't go into all the secret doctrine or indoctrination or all that. 
mishmash of whatever it is. Uh, suffice it to say that we were redoing OT3 some more. And Hubbard was case supervising us personally. And one night I had this brilliant awareness like, whoom, well, let's just take care of everyone on the ship. I wrote it up. Okay. My tone arm's floating. Needle won't stop. But I don't care about the meter. Let's just take care of everyone here. And he wrote back as a case supervisor, congratulations. First went through expanded OT3. That's what he called it. OT3X, I think, was the name. I don't believe it's around anymore. But he said, wonderful accomplishment. Very well done, like that. Love, Ron. And he wrote a note in there. Everyone needs to handle their own stuff. This is it. Thank you very much for wanting to help everybody. But each person needs to handle their own OT3 stuff. Because I was ready to take on the planet. Hey, let's go take care of all of this. Why wait? You know? So it was just a lovely acknowledgement.